gonna be mounting the dry sump system up this week. We have a tank that we gotta figure out. The pump bracket's coming, the pump's here. We're gonna be mounting up our turn one power steering pump. Similar pump that I run in the S14, but this is meant for a Corvette, so wanna make sure it all works together with our bracket and everything. Mount up our power steering cooler, because I am one of the few people that use it. And I got a bunch of new parts that came in. I won't be able to put them on the car because I'm waiting for a bunch of other things, but I'm really excited about. I'll make sure I show you guys. Stokes. So you can see here, this is called a spin trick. And what this crazy contraption does is it gets suction in from the dry sump pump into this unit, out of it, you go to your oil cooler and then back to your tank. But this on the very end actually goes directly to the oil tank and that's to unaerate any of the oil. And what ARE actually says is that you run this before your oil cooler because the oil is gonna be super dense going into your oil cooler that it can lower oil temps 10 to 20 degrees. And I wouldn't say that we had a bunch of issues with oil temps, but anytime you can make the oil temps lower without having to do anything, no fans, no nothing, we're gonna take it and give it a try. So it's a new system from them, really, really cool. Obviously I'm new to the dry sump game, so they tell me that it's recommended. I'm gonna believe them and we're gonna give it a go. We got rid of the Corvette specific tank because it basically sat right here and it was completely in harm's way. If you get hit in the fender, if you crash and your wheel smashes into your dry sump tank, it's gonna be a sad day. So we got this, it's three gallon. It's much shorter, bigger around, and it looks like it's gonna fit really, really good. We're gonna have to do some clearancing in here and down there to scoot it over a little bit, but that's gonna fit nice right there. And here's our vent can from ARE. So we gotta figure out where to mount this, get this mounted all right, get that mounted, work on the other power steering filter, get the power steering pump on. There's a bunch of mounting stuff in the engine bay. All right, we're gonna mount our power steering filter right now. So we're gonna mount it. Since the power steering cooler goes underneath the oil cooler right here, tucked away, the lines are gonna be short and very discreet. All right, got the filter, got our centering punch. I'm gonna hold it, time's gonna whack it. All right, back at these rib nuts. Gonna put them in the frame rail. Pull it in, be good. All right, so I'm gonna put on the turn one power steering pump. It should fit perfectly. Uh, just wanna make sure that it's going to fit. Just have the stock one in there now, but I wanna put this one on because we're gonna make sure like the lines fit and everything and that it all works together. So let's do it. Way too hard. Took me four minutes. Jesus. All right, so I'm gonna be mounting my ARE dry sump tank now. So I'm gonna start cutting, see if it fits. Hope that it fits. All right, so I got it marked out. This corner, this from the inside, gonna come up in here, cut. I'm gonna start cutting as little as possible and then make it look good if we need to. Don't wanna cut anything we don't need to cut right now. I'm gonna try to cut this without cutting the frame rail. See if it works. All right, we're clearance. Let's see if it fits. Can the, the rear, I wanna make sure that the drain goes on the outside of the frame rail. So it needs to scoot over more then. All right, more trimming. I think it could be a little bit higher because I think the hood's up a little bit. All right, so we got some holes, got some room. Pretty sure the tank fits. Just gotta figure out how to mount it now. So if it needed to go further, does it need to go any further out? Yeah, it needs to get more power. All right, so before we go any further with the dry sump tank mounting, we gotta see our hood height. Because it's there, it's fit mostly, but we gotta see how high we can go. So I'm gonna open up the new hood from Anderson Composites see how it fits, see if we have to clearance anything. Hopefully we don't have to cut the hood for anything. And I haven't seen it yet, so, woo! Oh, oh. Damn. 
It's like raised higher in the center than the stock one, I think, huh? Cowl induction hood. Well, right now, how the tank sits, it's like sitting against the hood. <laughs> yeah. Touching. Touching. So we got to figure it out. All right, so we trimmed out much more of the car, just made the amount of room that we needed. That enabled us to move the dry sump tank around, and bam, we found the spot. We're going to be able to actually bolt the clamp to the fiberglass, pre-existing fiberglass here, and only have to actually fabricate up to a mount on one side. So we're going to go ahead and place the tank, see if we can get it lined up, drill some holes, bolt the top in, and then see what we're going to do on the bottom. All right, I think we got our position. This is the center line up. This is forward and back. So if we line up that line to that line, there and there, that'll give us where we need to drill our hole. We're gonna drill both of our holes, put a spacer. The bracket will be mounted to this, and then we're gonna do something for the bottom bracket. But I think we got our position. Look at that concentration. All right, so we got the dry sump tank placed. It's, it's in. Have to do one more mount down here. I'm gonna make it go to this piece of box tube, but it's bolted into the fiberglass. Have some spacers up in here. It's sitting level. Appropriate amount of room around the tire. We're gonna throw the hood on and check the hood height. Make sure we're good. I think we're good, we're gonna make sure. Perfect! All right, so a couple of very important things came in today. A C5 AC bracket, because my dry sump system from ARE bolts to a C5 AC bracket, and then that'll get everything lined up on the correct belt line. Also, the mechanical fuel pump from Waterman. Look how tiny that is, it's crazy. But when I started putting the dry sump pump on the motor, first step with the AC pump, I realized that this hits part of the block. Partly because it's made for a C5, that's like an LS1 or an LS6 block. The RHS block that I'm using just cast a little bit different. There's a extra thing in the way there. So I'm gonna start by grinding this tab off so that the AC bracket will fit in there perfectly. Then go and bolt the dry sump pump on and see where it takes us. Not quite, gonna have to grind some more. Almost. More grinding. All right, I got the pump fit. Took a lot of grinding on the AC bracket. Pump went right on once I got the AC bracket to fit, but it's looking good. Got to do some alignment things because again, this was meant for a C5. I'm using all C6 pulleys and brackets and everything. It's not too big of a difference, but it definitely has a little bit of difference, so. You can see that's where the dry sup pump is going to be. That's it, it's mostly lined up. I'm gonna have to do a little fitting and stuff. Wanna make sure that the fittings fit between here, they go down to the pan down there, but um, we're looking good. All right, it's Sunday. We got a lot going on at the shop. Ryan's prepping the Red Ranger for a winter jam, which is next weekend. Dave's getting his Corolla done, and I have made a giant mess. So I need to clean up a little bit, but I can't even keep my mind straight. All right, so I have my vent can, and it's gonna go up in here, and the hose is gonna run to the top of the dry sump tank. And it is going to be a little bit difficult to drain it, but it's just standard 8th NPT, so we're going to get a, a barb fitting and run a little pet cock down here so that you can drain the catch can. In theory, once you figure out your oil level in the dry sump tank, you really don't get any blow by into here, but obviously there's a learning process that comes with finding the exact right oil level. So for that, we're going to be able to put the drain down here, reach up underneath the fender when it's time to drain it, crack the ball valve, drain the oil, close it back up, and that way I don't have to mount this in the engine bay because as you guys can see, the engine bay is already getting pretty crowded. So up in here, nice and sneaky and hidden, and still be able to drain it. You get some bolts, put it up inside, see how it fits, mount the dry sump tank, make sure that all works together, and that'll pretty much be done. It's 
sneaky, sneaky little catch can mount in there. That's gonna go right through here to the top of the oil tank. We got our dry sump tank mounted. It's placed in its final position. Super pumped about that. So we have the spin trick here, and I'll give you a little bit of an explanation of how our dry sump system is gonna work. So out of the pump, this is scavenged. It comes into this spin trick. And what this is, is an air to oil separator. So it comes into the air to oil separator out. It's gonna go to our oil cooler. And we put this in here so that all the oil going to the oil cooler is dense oil. So the oil cooler is gonna be much more efficient that way if the oil is dense and unaerated. From that, it's gonna come back into our ARE dry sump tank. From the tank, it gets all baffled and unaerated even further. And then this, goes into our pressure side into the motor. This is the air bleed, so any extra air coming out of this air to oil separator is gonna go back to the dry sump tank. This is where we run our valve covers to to let the motor vent even further into the can. And this goes back to our sneaky little catch can location that you saw me do earlier over there. So that's it with the oil system. Obviously there's a ton of lines and everything down there, but we'll address that when we actually go to start making lines for now. We're good. So I just started kind of getting out the, the water line fittings because you see we have a big dash 20 there at the water pump. That's gonna run to this bulkhead through this little mailbox slot that we have right here. Two dash 20s and then one dash three from the steam ports. Those are the lines. Those are probably gonna be the only lines going to the back inside of the car because we're gonna run them down the passenger side on the side of the seat. Next week, when I get some more fittings, I'll be making up this firewall, possibly doing some more stuff with the oil system because we're gonna do some things with the, the belt drive. I think I wanna convert some of these secondary drive things to eight ribs so that we have no problems driving our fuel pump. We're gonna figure out if we do wanna drive our fuel pump off the power steering pump like we intended or if we wanna drive it off the back of the fuel pump like is very common. So a lot of stuff's up in the air. Tomorrow's Monday. I'm gonna call a bunch of people, hopefully get some answers and that'll be in next week's episodes. I'll let you know how it goes. That's the end of this week. I feel like it wasn't the most productive week to be honest but we came up with a lot of stuff. We came up with a lot of plans. We know who we need to call. We know the next steps that we need to take. Kind of out of parts at this point. Got the dry sum stuff taken care of, which was awesome. Have a few more things to figure out with that, with belt lines and tensioners and all that stuff. But I'm super happy with the dry sump, how it's all laying out, the locations, everything else. But make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let us know how we're doing. Let me know if you want to work with us. Let me know if you see something I'm doing wrong. Make sure you stop the next Tuesday where we're going to be taking on a whole new set of challenges. Hopefully moving to the back. Work on some stuff back there because I'm tired of looking at it up here. See you guys later.